Uh, thank you guys for coming to this talk, rather in general for uh, to come in the presentation. Um, I'm really happy to be able to be in this uh, in real life uh, conference, back slowly to it. Um, the past two conferences that I had the opportunity to be presenting at uh, were held virtually, um, actually from here, from Poland. And they were great experiences uh, because we got to reach to more people that uh, obviously virtually. Uh, but I'm super excited to be able to interact with people uh, you know, that is doing the same thing that we're doing and just in general to be visiting Poland. So again, super excited about uh, being here. My name is Monica Restrepo and I am a software developer at Shopify. And today, uh, I have two goals. Uh, the first one is to share the experience that we have, the work, rather, that we're doing at Shopify uh, in order to contribute to React Native to make it better, and also to inspire you uh, to do the same, whether as an individual contributor or uh, as a company. The motivation for this is really clear. Uh, contributing to open source builds the future of software. And also contributed particularly to React Native uh, makes it undeniable the best, as I found uh, in this React for the haters uh, in a 100 seconds video. Um, so that's, I think, a, a good reason to do it. So let me start with some um, context on the story of Shopify. After many years of doing native development, uh, mobile development in this case, uh, a few years ago we decided to start uh, adapting React Native as our, as our default platform for building mobile applications. And the fact that this was done only a few years ago, uh, and no, not in 2015, uh, when React Native was actually open sourced, uh, might sound a little odd to you, but this only goes along with the way we take and bet on new technologies at Shopify. We have uh, both a conservative and an open mind uh, way to maintain and incorporate new technologies uh, into our stack. And this gives us uh, two benefits. So the first one is that we get to actually build up um, a deep level of expertise in the technologies that are foundational to our uh, products. But it also allows us to take calculate bets um, in on emerging technologies, knowing that sometimes uh, some, th these, uh, some of these technologies come to stay, and some just like disappear or evolve into uh, better technologies as time passes. So, in the case of React Native, uh, when it was first open source in 2015. We started exploring it uh, within, and, and just to check what possible things and positive things it will take into our products. We did it by uh, using it as some of our internal hackathons. And while we were able to see the many advantages that it had, we also were aware that performance wasn't better uh, than the products that we already had, performance that we had in our products. And the absence of first class Android support was uh, a you know, a reason for us to just hold on into transitioning completely. But, oh, sorry, I'm just gonna skip a little bit here. Uh, we continued in exploring React, using it at uh, some like POC and in general, using it in some of our, uh, you know, demos and just like seeing if, uh, how viable it was to rewrite some of the applications and products that we already have developed in it. And it was back in, in 2018 when we decided to say yes to the framework and initially just take on the challenge of rewrite one of our most popular applications at the time, uh, the Arrive app, which is now uh, known as the Shop app. And this was a great candidate because we didn't have Android support for this application and we obviously wanted to reach to these users. We had also learned from the previous experience, uh, not the previous, for the experience of one of uh, the companies that Shopify acquired who have been uh, implementing React Native 100% for their applications. We also uh, realized that having already been using React Web will allow us to have a learning curve a little bit less steep when it comes to onboarding developers into uh, developing for native, uh, I'm sorry, for mobile. And we thought that it was a great opportunity for us to start also investing in the framework uh, or library, right? Um, something for the long term that was only not for us, but also for the community. So just the same way we do with Ruby, Ruby on Rails, on Rails uh, Kubernetes, and Rich Media. So later that year, we, oh, sorry, this was, one back, oops. 
Yeah, there it goes, uh, storyline. So later that year and at the beginning of 2019, we, and after having a very uh, good experience rewriting the Arrive or Shop app, we decided to start rewriting also our uh, POS, point of sale application, and then the start team, which is the team responsible for helping merchants to, that are new to entrepreneurship, decides to also uh, write the Compass app, which is now Shopify Learn, uh, fully in React Native. So uh, this is how we started our journey with React Native uh, at Shopify. And this, uh, as I was saying, took us to adapt the framework as our um, default framework for developing mobile applications and uh, develop our internal onboarding process uh, so new and all developers uh, in the company could learn basic and advanced React Native. Obviously, this along with the, our commitment to uh, contribute to React Native uh, from the community perspective, because at Shopify, we believe that building software is uh, team sport. So how do we actually uh, contribute to React Native uh, within Shopify? So again, coming back to uh, we recognizing how important is it uh, to contribute to community and especially open source projects. And we react in particular, which one of uh, the, its biggest features is the support of the community. We uh, have people like, you know, like us developers, but we also uh, have companies like Software Mention and in general, just like many other companies do, contributed and committed, in, committed to tackle uh, the issues that the framework has. And also uh, happy to bring the framework to higher levels every time. So we understand that, there, that we are also responsible for the change that we want to see in the products we use uh, and the technology that we use as well. Uh, and this is one of our biggest motivations when it comes to contributing to open source projects. And this brings me to start actually talking about the projects that we have been uh, open sourcing and contributing uh, for React. And the first one that I want to bring up is React Native Skia, which uh, I know many of you are familiar with. Skia is a cross-platform drawing library that serves as the graphics engine uh, currently for Google, Google OS, uh, Mozilla, Mozilla, uh, I mean, and Firefox OX, and many other products. Um, when we decided to onboard this project, our main motivation was to tackle one of React Native's uh, biggest challenges, and it is its limited graphical capabilities. So we uh, took the initiative of uh, William Candilan and Christian Falk, uh, who first brought up the idea of extending React Native usability uh, to being able to express complex drawings like certain apps like Figma already do, um, and we could quickly offer the, support, uh, the full support to this project. So our original goals with Skia are to provide React Native with a set of powerful two-dimension drawing primitives that are consistent across iOS, Android, and web. Skia shortens the gap with Reanimated, enabling rich access to low-level two-dimensional rendering. Uh, it is also used in a lot of animations and different interactions, but also works within the boundaries uh, of whatever you can render within Skia already. And I have a couple of very cool examples uh, of what Skia can accomplish. Um, thank you, William, for this. Uh, this example, in this case, showcases uh, a couple of drawing primitives that previously were unavailable in the React Native ecosystem. Each button is in this example contains a drop and an inner shadow. The progress bar is rendered with an angular gradient. And at the bottom sheet, uh, we use a backdrop filter to blur the content below. And this is another example uh, more for Android. This is like a breath simulator that is also animated with Skia. So you can uh, witness how is it, well, maybe with the example code, how is it to uh, represent animations in Skia and just like drawings overall. OK. Um, another way that we have been actually contributing uh, to, to better React Native and is through our support to software mentions open source projects. Uh, we have React Native screens. Well, Software Mansion has them, and we are supporting them, uh, which exposes native navigation containers components to React Native. Uh, we also have Reanimated, which provides a low-level abstraction for the animated library API. And then the famous gesture handler that aims to replace React Native's gesture responder system. 
All of these projects are projects that are widely used for the community and just overall uh, pretty much a big percentage of all uh, React Native applications. And we have been focusing with Software Mentions team in providing first class uh, feedback to changes and actively supporting and work towards the evolution of these libraries. These projects continue to make React Native development smoother and also more effective. And we have also benefited for the relationship that we hold with Software Mentions because they are an experts uh, definitely in React Native. So it has been a win-win situation that starts from the idea of like open source and contributing to the community. What was that? Okay, so, and the last project that we have been working on and we are also about to open source, uh, it started with our support to the wish list project and continue with our own uh, project and it's meant to tackle one of the most frustrating aspects of developing in React Native, which is a quickly scrolling list. And I think we all have faced uh, the challenges that it implies to have a bunch of items uh, being rendered in, in flat list and just uh, eating off, like seeming very flanky or just having like the, the awful uh, white spaces at the bottom and stuff like that. So um, flash list, which is how we decided to name this project, um, is a fast performer React Native list, which aims to prevent uh, the blank cells that I was just mentioning. It's a swap from flat list in seconds, and the idea is to get instant uh, performance, as you can see in the demo, and you will see in the next one. Um, it's meant, oh, this already works on top of uh, recycler list view to create a drop-in replacement for flat list that, again, provides very performant rendering even in low-end devices. We are currently on version 06.1, and uh, migrations were straightforward for, and very performant for a couple of teams that we have been doing it. So right now, uh, our shop team, which is the one that leads the efforts for the shop app, have migrated the search results list to use flash list, and our POS team uh, has migrated their order list uh, with significant performance improvements, which uh, makes us really happy. This example here is an example of 200 uh, objects or, or items in this flat list, flash list, I'm, I'm sorry. And you can see how seamlessly and fast uh, that can be. So um, I recommend you guys once open source to try it. OK. Um, so bringing a SCIA uh, and to React Native, helping improve the libraries that we are very familiar with, like Reanimated and Gesture Handler, and trying to solve the problem for cranky flat lists are some of the contributions that have helped our work at Shopify when developing our own products, um, but also have solved many of the issues for many of the developers out there, right? With like in the example of Skia or the other libraries that I just previously mentioned. So uh, this makes, again, a win-win situation for us as a company because we become, our development process becomes better. It helps us to uh, just, you know, make our, the evolution of React solid, more solid and rapid and, and just better for all of us, right? Which uh, brings me back to, I actually skipped one slide. There you go. Um, to talk about the many advantages of having com the community or just companies in general uh, shape what React Native is now and what it will be in the future uh, by guaranteeing a rapid and solid evolution, not only of the library, but also of the mobile development experience overall. At Shopify, we believe that detecting the weak points of the technologies that we work with and working on them together with the community uh, and within Shopify itself, uh, we can improve and not only improve uh, any of the technology that we use, but in this case, React Native, but also make development better for our engineers, make our products better, and help us have a good impact in the framework itself to continue moving forward. And well, when I just wanted to conclude with, when I started at Shopify, one of the things that I was the most excited about was the idea of being able to contribute to multiple or, all of, or any project that Shopify is currently working on. Because Shopify works with that uh, open source mind where you can literally just drop in and see if you have better words to improve projects or anything, you can just pretty much do it. 
Uh, my official position in the company is not even of a mobile developer. I'm currently doing backend, but I'm really passionate about uh, doing mobile work. That has been what I've been doing the whole time in my career. So um, I have had infinite opportunities to fix and improve some of our own projects on the mobile side of the things at Shopify. And uh, so I don't forget what I've learned in mobile. And this has been really cool. So I think um, that it makes sense for us to also bring this mindset to everybody here today and everywhere uh, who is using the library that we are so in love with now uh, and we have adopted as our main tool to build the future of mobile, uh, not only for us, but also for all. That's it. Thank you so much.